First Day Podcast coming to you on November 12, 2021. Uh, again, another one from the road. Um, as I don't have any time really to record shows um, in the studio as much, especially the solo shows as much. Um, but you take advantage of what you can, man. You know, we have the other option to doing this on, you know, on the road. Um, I uh, right now I have about twenty minutes to record right now, so this is gonna be, this is gonna, this is gonna be a very heavy football episode. Honestly, um, I think what I might do today is see what I'm gonna work right now. I will probably do another episode tonight as well, and uh, publish it late tonight or tomorrow morning as well. Because there's a lot of content I want to get in. I don't I want to forget. I want to get in and get some thoughts on, but I can't get it all done here and. 20 minutes, so I'm, what I had planned initially, as I put on my seatbelt here a second, is I wanted to, um, do a longer episode, like, 45 minute an hour episode by myself, but that's not possible right now, so I'll probably split it into two, and just take care of the things here, um, that I want to get to right now, in this moment, um, very football heavy here, of course, because a lot of things happen in football, even after I recorded the Football's Awesome podcast uh, episode back a couple days ago, <clears throat> for example, Oda Beckham Jr. now is with the Rams. The Rams have now powered up. And, you know, Rams are 7-2. and two. They are the second best record in the, in, well, in the NFC, but definitely in the, in the league as well, in the NFL. Um, look at the roster. They're going all in. And they've been doing this for pretty much, that's been the theme for the last year with, with the Rams, you know. Going after Matthew Stafford, you know, and you know just the, the amounts of moves they've made, and they've, you know, trade away dra- future draft picks because they because their priority is to win now. Um, Alden Beckham Jr. is obviously available because of the fact that him and the Browns did not get along. Um, and that didn't work. Uh, obviously, it got a little bit ugly toward the end, but we already suspected from since last year that the old Dell Beckham Cleveland Browns marriage was was already not. Um, it was it was it wasn't gonna work. We already suspected that as far back as last year that maybe it was not gonna work. Uh, for, for football reasons, we're not even talking about locker room because there was no talk of Odell being a, being a problem in the locker room and this whole idea of him being a cancer and all this stuff. Yeah, it looked a little bad at the end with the you know his dad coming out on social media and coming out and saying things about Baker Mayfield, and then LeBron, his boy LeBron James, coming out and saying things on social media. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad look. But Odell back for the most part has been a good citizen to Cleveland. Let's be let's keep it real there. Okay. Yeah, it got a little ugly, but he wanted out. At this point, he wanted out. It wasn't going to work anyway. I think both sides win here because you saw the Browns first game without Odell last week. Fantastic performance against Cincinnati. Um, Odell now goes to a team that he. I mean, he said he wanted to go to a, a, a contender. Well, I mean, no, no, I mean the Browns were a contender. It's, it's, it's getting clear, uh, but um, the Rams are certainly a contender, and so he gets what he wants. So both both sides here win. Both sides here win, and you can move forward. Uh, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is a, this is a dead issue now. I, I don't like this idea of calling guys cancers because we don't like how it, what might be portrayed. And do, do we know that all the things being portrayed are true? I mean, again, the media, it, the way the media does things, and not just in politics, it, it's happened in, it happens in sports too. Let's, be, let's get real. It happens in sports too. The media does play a heavy influence on how we perceive people and players and, and celebrities and, and of that nature. And unless we are able to discern that, we are going to be played like fools sometimes. Like, I'm not, I'm not sitting there defending Odell Beckham Jr. I think he, there is some quality to him that I will say is a bit... I, I don't want to use the word troubling, because I think being... I mean, he's a, he's a bit of a diva. Let's be real. Maybe a bit of a hard ass. But at the same time, I, he's, he's never been a... He's not a bad guy, at least to my knowledge. He's never hit anybody. There's never been, never been any domestic abuse allegations towards this guy. So we need to be very careful with, with, with the words we use, you know. And I, I know I, I say this, people say, well, well, why are you being so preachy today? Well, I look, we need to be very careful because these are, at the end of the day, these are human beings still. And treat others the way you want to be treated yourself. That's the way I see that. And again, I, people may not see the world the way, I, the way I see it. That's fine. But this is, what I'm, this is my show. So I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say and keep moving. That's simple. So, again, both sides win here. Odell, you know, wins, and he goes to a contender and a team that is very much a Super Bowl contender. And the Browns, you know, get rid of uh, him and, you know, are able to move forward. Um, speaking of pl- players on, on the move, the, Cam Newton is back in, in Carolina. Didn't see that coming. We saw the rumors yesterday that they were interested in talking to him, whatever, but didn't think that's going to 
with the Flores. Not even a full two years after he uh, he was released from the, from the Panthers. He's back in Carolina. Um, Sam Darnold's out four to six weeks. Um, so, obviously, this, this is the move to make. Um, first question is, is Cam Newton vaccinated yet? I mean, that's, that's my, not, not that's my, it's my business necessarily. But, again, that was one of the things that we assumed that because of the Patriots cutting him back in, you know, August, September, um, that he wasn't vaccinated. And that may have played a heavy, heavy reason why they decided to release him. Now, granted, looking back in hindsight, they've done the right move. Mac Jones has been fantastic in New England. Um, I, I'm, I mean, I'm happy with Cam Newton, obviously. I don't know what left in the tank he has. I mean, I thought he was okay during the preseason, but at the same time, um, what can he provide to this Panthers team, who is actually, you know, they're, they're in the playoff hunt. And I, I, don't, I don't blame him for doing this, because if the playoffs start today, they're in. <laughs> I don't know if you guys realize that. If the playoffs start today, they are in as a seventh seed. So you're halfway through the year. You might as well push. You might as well try. You might as well see what you can do going forward. And uh, maybe this works out for the Panthers and Cam Newton, you know, re- re- revigorates that, that fan base. I mean, they started three zero. They've struggled since then. Um, they lost uh, what, what four, last, lost five last six games since uh, start three zero. Um, so, but again, the NFC when you get past the top five teams, and I would say the Saints are in a little bit of trouble now too, that with, with the quarterback issues. There's possibly two two playoff spots open now in the NFC, two wild card spots, and Carolina's in, is Carolina's in it right now in the catbird seat for the seventh seed right now. So why not go go for it all here? So I I, uh, I, I admire David Tepper for uh, prioritizing winning. If he, he believes Cam Newton is the, is the best chance right now to win right now in this next two months and we get down to, to the second half of the year, so be it. I I, I support it. I definitely support it. I hope Cam. You know, I mean, I've been a Cam guy for a long time. I hope he does well. You know, I, I hope he does really well. And, and Panthers make the playoffs, hopefully. I mean, for their sake, maybe we'll see. I, I, I don't. I just don't know what to run on because I don't know how good he is anymore. He hasn't played football really since August. He was okay in preseason, of course. It wasn't great, but who knows? Maybe he can turn things around. Maybe he can uh, get that fan base going. I don't know. But it's good. To see, but oh, all the narrative. Narrative-wise, it's good to see Kenwin back in uh, in Carolina, back home, where everything started for him, you know? So, now, the talk in the last two weeks, and, you know, this Aaron Rodgers vaccination brouhaha, I know I touched a little bit on the, on the footballs on the podcast with Zach and with Kyle a little bit, but not in detail. I haven't had a chance to really sit with my thoughts and discuss what, where I'm sitting at here with this. But, to me, with all this... I, I, I am still confused at all. You know, I, I mean, I'm, first of all, I'm really curious how Aaron Rodgers will, will be, uh, you know, when he comes back to the Packers, whether it be this weekend or next weekend, because they're this, this still saying there's a small chance he may not play this weekend against Seattle, which is a huge game, by the way. Um, given the fact that also they lost to the Chiefs last week, they could have kept pace with the Cardinals. You know, they were actually number one seed prior to the Chiefs game by virtue of a head to head against the, the Cardinals. Um, but I am curious how he'll be received. Forget about his teammates and stuff. But by the crowd, you know, will the crowd boo him, uh, you know, in his first home game back with, uh, beyond with COVID? Obviously, you guys have been following the story. You know, he he, he, uh, he had said back in August when asked about whether or not he was vaccinated, he said he was immunized. And then he had COVID about a week and a half ago. And then we find out that he indeed was not vaccinated. He goes on Joe Rogan and starts saying all these things about... You know, it's you know this, the the woke left and the, the crazy right and this and that and you know that everybody's crazy and you know and then he was saying something to the, to the effect of the, you know that, that certain allergies he can't take vaccines because of certain allergies. And, uh, look, you know where I stand the vaccination thing. If you don't want to get it, don't get it. I'm not going to push you to do that. You ask me personally which what you should do. Talk to your doctor if you if you if you're good enough to get vaccinated. Go do it personally. That's my opinion, but I'm not going to force you to do it. It's your body, your choice. I think what it comes down to for me personally with this whole thing, and if it, if it sounds noisy back in the background, I apologize, I am driving. I think what I'm confused again still, a week and a half after all this has started, is why did he lie? Like, what, what, what was the point of lying about this? I don't know what he had to gain. or to, I mean... My life on this. I, I just don't understand. You have two quarterbacks, for example, in Carson Wentz and Kirk Cousins, who c- 
clearly told the world that we're not getting vaccinated, but we will follow protocols. Okay, and they didn't get they didn't get any uh, they, they got very very little blowback. I mean, obviously, people who are pro-vax are going to sit and say, "Oh, you're a bunch of assholes. You didn't get you know, vaccinated." But that's opinions, though. But at least they had the balls to put their stamp on it, put their, their foot on it, and not lie about it. When I get a vax, we'll follow the protocols and keep the shit moving. And you know what? I respect that. I do. I really do. But Aaron Rodgers, I don't understand why he would do this. Even if you say to protect his brand, couldn't I argue that him being honest about it is actually the, the safe route? Saying that, like, if you, like, for example, if, if we're now finding out that. If he had said that he he's could get vaccinated because of certain medical things like allergies and all that stuff that he is not admitting now in hindsight, had he said this in August, I guarantee the blowback would be different. I, I guarantee that the, the, the blowback would be just as similar as what Kirk Cousins and Kirk and Carson Wentz are getting right now, which is very minimal. You know, look, I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan. I think he's the most talented quarterback in the history of football. He is. But he's a bit arrogant, and he's, he's a little, and he's a bit sensitive too. Also, too, you see the reaction. Also, too, he's kind of come back on his on his, some of his words, and although he says that he does not regret what he said in terms of like not getting vaccinated, his right, of course, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna find him on that. It was a little bothersome too. Also, he started using Martin Luther King in his uh, in his uh, <laughs> his ex- explanation about why he's not vaccinated, why he's not vaccinated, and whatnot. Which is, just, which is really, to me, ludicrous to use that. So convenient people use Dark King's words for their own agenda. It, it, it really baffles me sometimes, but whatever. Not here or there. If you don't get vaccinated, don't get vaccinated. I mean, whatever. I mean, just why lie about it? And that, that's, again, to me, the big, the big elf in the room. Why would you lie about it? You know? It doesn't make any sense to me, personally. But again, you know, you know people do things for different reasons, and and you know it is what it is. It, it is what it is. So now we don't, do we know if he's, if he's playing on Sunday against the Seahawks, a huge game for both teams, really. Uh, I, I guess we heard a report a couple days ago that there's a small chance he might miss the game. I suspect he'll still play, but that's just me saying this based on just gut, not on, not on actually new information. So I'll tell you he'll probably play, but. Just the idea of a small chance being being something that's a thing um, is enough to uh, warrant some, uh, you know, whoopsies, if you will. But anyway, next thing on the docket here, like I said, I'll probably do another podcast, cut these top, top to half, and do the other half part tonight. Um, in case you didn't know this, if you're a college football fan, this week is Florida State Miami week. Now, you guys know I'm a Florida State fan, of course. I've been a fan for 30 plus years. This rivalry has been my favorite rivalry in all sports. Not just college, in all sports. I've enjoyed the hype growing up as a kid in, in middle school in Miami and having to deal with a lot of Canes fans in the area and, the, you know, this, my best friend's a Canes fan, so we have a lot of fights and arguments about this, uh, about the games every year. It was so much fun in the 90s. And even parts of the 2000s was actually not that bad. And then early, I mean, you say early, the early aughts, too, was not terrible. Like, even when Florida State was really, really good, Miami was still pretty decent. You can get, get hyped for the game. But the last couple of years, man, oh, my gosh. Like, no one's cared. Like, the, the last couple of years has been really bad to the point where you know it's bad. It's bad enough that it's no longer a nationally relevant rivalry anymore. Okay? You know it's really bad when, when nationally it's just getting attention. But now locally, no one's talking about it. There's no hype locally about this game whatsoever. I talked to Kane fans and and, and old fans alike, and some forgot the game was this weekend, which is shocking. Because this was this was one of the benchmark rivalries in all sports at one point. As I said, it's my favorite personal favorite rivalry in all sports. To this day, it is, but unfortunately, it doesn't matter much anymore. And to make that matters worse, I'll be at work for at least half this game tomorrow. So, it's just one of those things where I wish we cared more about it, but I understand why no, it's no longer no longer, rele- uh, no longer relevant anymore. Excuse me, it's some water. The, 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 the Nulls stink this year. 
The Canes are kind of playing much better football lately, but they're not that good. Just, let's be real. They're not. They're no longer a powerhouse. They haven't been a powerhouse in quite a while. So it's understandable why it's no longer relevant anymore. But I think the shocking part, and, and it's really sad at the end of the day, the shocking part for me really is that no one cares locally. It's not even a, gl- a, a blip of excitement for this game. I mean, I'm kind of excited about the game myself because I, anytime you play the Canes or we play the Canes or the Gators, you know, I'm always, even if the goals are bad, I'm still somewhat invested into it. But this year, again, it's like the third or fourth year in a row where it's just, meh, no one cares. I mean, Miami was really good a couple years ago, 2017. And then after that, after 2017, they, they just fell off again. The, the Noles have been, been really bad for the last couple of years. Missing bowl games, too, especially, which is shocking in itself. This whole thing is sad, man. I mean, again, I grew up in an era where this was, was, was the rivalry. This game pretty much decided the college football playoff picture. Oh, not playoff, but the, the college football national championship picture, so I say, rather. Because back then, they didn't have the playoff, or even the BCS, not that matter, until the, the late, late 90s. I mean, I mean, I remember watching. The first year I got in the college football, that was the first wide right by Jerry Thomas at uh, at Bill Campbell, and that game pretty much set up Miami's uh, winning the national title that year, at least a share of it with Washington. And then the very next year they play again in the Orange Bowl, and wide right one more time by Dan Mowry, wide right again, and then the wide left in two thousand, heartbreaking of course. And now we're at a point where these teams are barely five hundred. The Noles are under five hundred for that matter. The Canes have played much better football really recently, but they're not really that good, like I said. It's a sad state of affairs, man. It's, a, it's my favorite rivalry of all sports, and I can't even enjoy it, even on a, on a local level. And I think that's the shocking part, that people locally here in South Florida do not give a shit about this game tonight, tomorrow. It's really sad. But we are here, and this is what happens when your teams do not play good football, man. So... Uh, I don't know. I guess I put in my title today in this episode, FSU Miami Week, and no one cares. <laughs> I guess I'll do that. So anyway, that's not for me. Well, I'll probably record another podcast tonight or early tomorrow. We'll see. I'm just working a long day today, so um, you know, so maybe I'll put it on another episode like tonight. Like I said if I if I'm feeling up to it, of course, because I have a lot of things I want to talk about also too, especially. But I had a chance to touch on it today on this one. So, again, on Twitter at EJKristen7, Ernst Jacob Podcast, all podcast catchers, of course. If you like wrestling, of course, you can check out the Tech 3 Wrestling Podcast. Um, we did one last night, actually, with uh, just dropped today. Um, a, a good friend of this, of this show, of course, and that show as well, Big Jim, James Neeson, was on the show. Um, in the, uh, the Mikey B seat, Mike Bernier's seat, because he was out with his wife for his birthday. So, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Uh, Jim coming in and holding the fort down. But other than that, uh, talk to you guys soon, um, and stay up, and we'll see you on another episode later on today. We'll give you a bonus episode. We'll see. Love you guys. Take care, and see ya.